Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the time may be where you are right now. This is going to be a little bit different video than I normally make because our audio didn't work for some reason. I'm guessing the cord wasn't plugged in all the way to the camera. Not too sure. Anyways, we're going to try to do a voiceover on this. See how it goes. Here I am just removing the uh, old running boards off this truck. I'm not really a big fan of running boards up here anyways in the winter or in the summer because the salt and snow tends to uh, hang on those and it just ends up rusting your vehicles out. Here I'm getting ready to remove that uh, piece of metal. I'm just looking on the other side now to see how that one is put on. Bear in mind this truck is not going to be a top-notch restoration. It's not even going to be a restoration. It's going to be a get it welded up, get it solid, get it looking half decently, and then uh, prime it, paint it. And hopefully we can drive this for quite a few years. My wife and I actually uh, uh, were looking around. We, were, we had no intentions of getting a new truck, but we just uh, curious, so we a look around and we inquired and uh, as near as we can figure a brand new pickup truck is going to be around anywhere between 60 and 75 thousand dollars 72 thousand dollars up here Canadian so we're looking at we would be looking at about a thousand dollars a month payments easily and our insurance would be somewhat expensive as well so we opted to find something like this Now this is a 1985 Ford F-150. Now I believe this old truck has, I think 180,000 kilometers on it. That's original. I believe it was an old farm truck too. I could be wrong on that. The reason I say I think it's an old farm truck is because it's not really that rusty for the age of it. I believe it's about 40 years old, 39, 40 years old. Now, uh, the reason I think it's a farm truck is because most farmers don't wash their trucks a lot in the winter up here. Now, believe it or not, that tends to save your vehicles. I know it sounds weird, but up here when we run in a lot of salt, if you let that salt, if you don't wash that salt off, it will turn to a dry powder and it will blow off. But as soon as you hit that dry powdered salt with water, well, that water carries all that salt down into every little crack and crevice you have on that truck and it just lays there and it gets to work eating your metal which is rust when I worked in a body shop I typically seen a lot of the vehicles come in they could be a few years old and you could tell who washed them lots in the winter and who didn't the people who wash the trucks lots in the winter they tended to be just total rust buckets but the people who didn't wash their vehicles the body was still really good in the spring and summer when they washed them up incidentally too I was talking to a fellow the other day who works at our local paint supplier store here I went in to ask about paints and what type of paint I should use I'm uh, kind of old-school that way we used to use a uh, Centauri paint up here when we used to paint automobiles in our uh, body shop I worked for Turns out you can't get that paint anymore, which I heard that quite a few years ago that you cannot get Centauri paint. Now they sell Nason paint, and he said that's not, you know, I mean, he said it works, but it's not its not a super good paint. But uh, I'm not really looking for super good paint anyways for this old truck. I even went looking for a product that we used to call Kolar. It came out in, a, I believe it was a green color. And uh, it was like a primer, but it really protected the the metal so it didn't rust anymore. But that has been taken off the market as well. And uh, he went on basically to tell me that anything good that used to be out there has been removed from, uh, from the market due to environmental concerns. Uh, he even told me as far as engine shampoo goes now, if you want to clean your your engine and pressure wash it 
He said, you may as well go take some oranges and lemons and squeeze it and uh, spit it all over your grease because that's about what you got now. There's not much out there with really heavy chemicals in there that does any cleaning. Uh, yeah, he... Honestly, he advised me uh, if I was going to paint an older truck, if I wasn't too concerned about uh, the look of it, you know, uh, go get some rust oleum or trim clad. Uh, he said I could probably do as good a job with that as I could with the new paint that's out there. Now, when I used to paint cars too for myself, I used to mix a uh, clear coat, 30% uh, 30, 30 clear coat in with the, with the paint. And a lot of times I wouldn't even thin it using uh, uh, Varsol or acetone or paint thinner. I, I would uh, actually take a take an electric hot plate, and I would put a uh, put some water in a, in a in a pot on the hot plate, and I would open up the uh, can of the paint, and I would set that paint can in there, and I would heat it up sitting inside that water, uh, and that's how I would paint the the vehicles. I would let the uh, paint thin out enough. I wouldn't need thinner. Uh, I mean, it thins out when it gets hot, right? But you know, I mean, especially now it's easier to do because we have induction hot plates now, so there's no real open flame to catch fire. But it sure did seem to make a difference. You know, your, your reds didn't turn to uh, pink after a few years, but uh, I find if people use paint thinner, that's what would happen. But if you mix it with Varisol or, uh, or just, uh, you know, a, a reducer, a good reducer, maybe even a nascent reducer, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Mix that with your... Uh, your uh, trim clad which I believe is exactly the same paint as uh, what you folks in the US would call Rust-Oleum I believe it's the same company I believe it's exactly the same paint now he did paint a lot of stuff too with a paint called uh, plastic coat I haven't seen that around for a while I don't know if they've taken that off the market either it would be a shame because it was a really good paint as well now here yeah, I'm on my knees working here. I do eventually, Heather and I do eventually build a good set of steel saw horses, which I do show you in this video. And I also get my plasma cutter working. Yeah, I, I also get some uh, good uh, soapstone too. Uh, these Silver Street pencils, uh, they, they don't tend to last that long, I find. So here I'm just cutting the strips to uh, to replace what I needed on the right side of the cab. Not sure really why it's there. Maybe it's just to move the cab around inside the factory when they're making it, or it is to attach stuff like running boards. <laughs> Anyways, it's there. Maybe, maybe it's to strengthen that that. Part of the floor so it doesn't oil can all the time when you when you step on the floor now I am going thicker metal here than what it was sold with when it was new the reason I'm doing that is so I don't have to try to uh, hammer form any kind of ridges inside this floor pan like I say we don't get an oil can Now this material I'm using here is uh, 1 16th of an inch, so it should be lots heavy enough. As you can see we got quite a bit of a snowstorm here too. It lasts about 3 or 4 days and then it's usually gone. So here after testing this I just hook up the getting the ground set up here. Yeah, I'm just looking for a pair of ice grips. This little welder came with a little cheap set of uh, a little cheap ground clamp and uh, for what I do here welding with it sometimes I'll leave it on number four and I will just uh, weld that le weld like that for quite a while and it ends up overheating the spring on the little clamp and then it ends up falling off. So, I've tried ends off 
battery cables. I think I'm going to find a really heavy clamp though for a battery cable. See how that does. Yeah, I'm also running low on Argo Shield, Auto Weld, whatever you want to call it. Boy, I tell you, this, this this building, you know, may not be closed in completely, but let me tell you, it is it is so nice. You know, I don't have to go digging through the snow to find my stuff. It has uh, really changed how we do things around here. We can get started at this project a lot earlier. You know, there's a lot of welding I can do before it's time to paint. And actually, as I do this video today, it's it's really nice. I was actually working yesterday just in a t-shirt. That's how nice it was. That video I will probably edit and uh, put that up probably tomorrow. Now, I haven't used a sandblaster much on this since I... Uh, since I built it. This this is actually a, a clip before I even built the sandblaster. If you watched the sandblasting video, you would have already seen I had this installed, but this is showing you how I did it. Now, I do try to be very careful with, uh, with the pieces I put on. I, I want them to kind of line up and, you know, they're not going to look factory or anything, but it's, it's, it's going to work. It's going to be strong. It's going to be solid. Should outlast both Heather and I. Which is, which is good. Now this particular old Ford I have here, it is a 1985. It has the straight six cylinder, 300 cubic inch displacement. It has a single barrel carburetor on it. It has a three speed automatic transmission which I would like to change maybe someday to a four speed. But since this is going to be Heather's truck, I think she wants to keep it in an automatic. And it will be a two wheel drive. Now the frame itself on this truck is pretty solid. There's a bit of rust, a bit of scale. That usually happens up here anyways. You can see there's uh, quite a breeze blowing through here. I, I think that's why they call these places breezeways when they put them on a house because uh, there's a bit of bit of air coming through there. So I have to be careful which way I weld because I am using gas with my uh, hard wire. And I don't use flux core wire either because then you have to spend a lot of time chipping that and wire wheeling or, or you know, wire brushing that that uh, slag off and then as you're chipping it you're just denting and bending the metal anyways it's way cleaner and it, and you know there's a lot less cleanup when you're done and you're not going to end up uh, you're not going to end up dimpling all the the material as you're chipping that slag off so I'm fortunate enough to still have a lot of my tools from when I worked in the body shop and when I worked as a welder fitter that's uh, nice I try to hold on to all those tools so for me this project is, is really fun it's it's quite a change from uh, working on the building Heather's enjoying it too it's a nice it's one of those projects there that you you, you look forward to and it's just uh, you know it's, it's something to get up and look forward to every day instead of the the monotonous routine of getting up and working on the building every day. 
we will eventually get back in the building, but uh, we're going to let things dry up. And to be honest with you, we need a vehicle. Well, I tell you, I think it's hard to beat these little these little Hobart welders. Now you can see that's one sixteenth inch, and uh, I'm getting pretty good penetration. You can see it heating up all the way through. The material, the, the, the sheet metal that comes with, you couldn't weld on setting number four, you know, uh, with the material they, you get with these vehicles. Now the new ones, I guess most all the body panels, uh, when they replace them now, they, they have to use a, like a urethane uh, glue to hold them on from what I understand. But you can't weld them anymore. Now I, I'm just tacking this, but I do weld this all solid. You know, it's probably not necessary, but I do weld it solid. That way I don't get a lot of flexing and, and twisting and prying and pulling. When I start, to, if I start going down these back roads with the, the bouncing and pounding, it stays together really good. Yeah, these welders weld so nice when you get the settings right. If you have clean, clean uh, steel, and you're smooth enough, you know, they do they do a nice bead. Up hand or down hand. Clearly, they do a nicer job going down hand, but uh, you know, is what it is. You can see here. Sorry, the cameras get bad there. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not 100. You know, it may not look like a, look like a professional did this welding, but uh, it's certainly going to hold the vehicle together. Now I gotta find a spot to put the ground on. Might be a little rusty there, but that's okay. I believe we get audio back very shortly. I'm just not exactly sure where here, but we do get our regular audio back. You know, because the sound didn't totally quit all the way through. Yeah, like I say, I do end up building a, we do end up building a good set of metal saw horses, which I believe you see at the end of this video. And I also get our plasma cutter working, so we don't need to uh, burn through these uh, zip cut discs. We were picking up these 5 inch uh, by, I believe they were 1 16th inch discs for 99 cents a piece when they were on sale. But the last year or so, they went from 99 cents each, these DeWalt ones, to two discs for $3. So that's when they're on sale. Now, I think I said earlier that our plasma cutter, the little, it had a built in compressor in it and it burnt out. So I had to take it all apart and. Uh, I ran a hose from the inside out so I can hook it to the compressor and I just set the regulator on the compressor to a certain pressure and uh, we just plug the hose in and unplug it when we're done because uh, on this trigger on the plasma cutter there's no there's no switch on this one to turn the air on or off so it just hisses through all the time. This I believe I put in the 
right side of that rocker panel, if I'm correct. I think you can see how thick this material is. And again, somebody asked me uh, if it matters if I put thicker material in here, you know, because it was thin before, does it matter? No, it makes no difference. It just makes the truck stronger. And it'll take longer to rust out. Well, I don't know how bad this voiceover is going. Hopefully I'm explaining things and keeping you somewhat entertained. Yeah, see, I didn't even have the sandblaster built yet there, I don't think. No, in fact, I know I didn't. So here I put it in there and I, I checked to see where it is and then I cut the old piece out here. You'll see this. I believe I show it on here. But I don't leave the old rusty stuff in there. I don't want it to... Uh, just keep rusting, I want to cut that all out. So here I'm just fitting it. I'm marking down where the tacks are so I can just grind those, cut them out of there. Then I can slide that in tight. I really enjoy this kind of stuff. It's, it's uh, what I used to do a long time ago for a living and I really enjoyed it but uh, I went on I got bored and I went on to do something else usually I get bored real easy as you can tell and I gotta jump onto another project and then I come back to the other project after a while just like that sandblaster and the sawmill I mean the sawmill it's all complete now it's all painted up and you know it may not look like a new one but it uh, looks like a painted up used one <laughs> so let me know folks do you do you mind these kind of uh, voiceover videos was it uh, you know was it such a bad thing that the the audio quit leave a comment if you don't mind and let me know what you think now here I just Showing how they got around that. So here I'm just getting this ready to to uh, install it. There we go. We're ready to uh, get this puppy going. Now what I'll do is I will uh, install this here, and then I'll cut the rust out from the other side. Is usually what I do. And now seeing how this old truck is uh, going to be a daily driver for us, you know, I'm not going to worry too much how this looks underneath. I won't be grinding too much of these welds at all. I'll be just sandblasting it to get rid of a lot of that rust. Again, it's something I really enjoy doing. Now the uh, rocker panels here, they're, they're fairly easy to work on. And the uh, rear cab corners, once I shape this piece I'm welding in now, I can work on those uh, cab corners. Now we do weld this in, I do weld this all solid. Of course I have to weld up that uh, cut I made on the, uh, the uh, rounded part of the rocker panels. 
no big deal. Now, if you watch the next video, you'll see I have the uh, back of the cab. It's, it's uh, coming along really good. And the snow is even gone. Heather and I typically work at the truck for, you know, four or five hours a day. I think yesterday we worked probably eight or nine hours on it. But the way I look at it though, so if I spend a thousand dollars a month into this, which we won't be obviously, we haven't even spent any money into it yet. But if we spend a thousand dollars a month into this, that's what we would spend on payments for a new truck. You know, a thousand dollars a month in 12 months, that's, uh, you know, $12,000. You can sure build a really nice old truck for $12,000. Now, we have no intentions of doing this, but that's just a comparison. $12,000 would, uh, you know, rebuild pretty much all of the running gear on this. It would rebuild the whole engine, the transmission, new dry shaft, you know, it would rebuild all the rear axle, the whole front suspension, the brakes. That's me doing the work myself, right? There's not much to these old trucks. That's why I say $12,000, you, sure, uh, you could sure do a lot with these old trucks. A new one, twelve thousand dollars. That's a year's worth of payments, maybe, and uh, that truck is just getting worse. Where something like this would be getting better if you spend a thousand dollars every month into it, and that's the way I look at things. Just a little smoky. a little bit smoky. Now I know some people spot weld this stuff in here or they'll tack weld these panels in or they weld a little bit here and there and jump all around. You know for the material I'm, I'm using it's fairly thick it will absorb the heat. Now when I was younger if I was welding on thinner material that I didn't want to warp say on the side of the body I usually had different sizes of uh, different sizes and thicknesses of brass and I would uh, keep it in a Ziploc freezer bag in the freezer and I would keep that brass really cold and I would hold it in behind the metal that I was welding if if I was able to reach in there that way the brass would work as a heat sink so it would draw the the heat from the surrounding metal so it wouldn't warp while I was welding it and it's also non-ferrous so if there's any holes there it works as a backer as well and uh, it uh, won't, won't stick to it and, it'll, and the uh, won't blow through either when I'm welding it. Something like this though, no need for that. It's thick enough there, it's not going to do a whole lot of warping. And if it does, well, a ball peen hammer will fix that in a hurry. So if you're mechanically inclined at all, if you're needing a truck, my honest advice to you is, uh, you know, pick up an older one and, and if you have the time and if you're healthy enough, and if, you're, and if you're able to, do something like this. You know, if you think you're going to need a truck in, a, in six months, a year from now, pick up an older truck. I, I was asking around and so this little truck here, we get anywhere between 21 to 24 miles per gallon with this truck. Now I do know the size of US and Canadian gallons are different sizes, but you can check that out. But we get anywhere between 21 to 24 miles per gallon with this truck when we had it, when we were testing it out. Some of the newer trucks, they're not much different. My neighbor bought one, I believe it's a three quarter ton Ford gasoline engine in it. He said he's lucky to get 14 miles per gallon out of that truck and it's only two years old. Plus he's got to spend that thousand dollars a month on payments and uh, of course his insurance because he has to have full coverage on it. That went through the roof as well. So we pay around $60 now per month for insurance on this truck. 
and it's just PLPD we call it here so that's uh, PL is a uh, uh, public liability and the PD stands for property damage so PLPD we don't have uh, fire insurance on it we don't have collision on it we don't have theft insurance it's just public liability if uh, you know if someone steps out in front of us and you know they sue us the insurance covers that property damage well I guess if we uh, run into somebody and destroy their vehicle our insurance covers that unless it's that no fault thing where their insurance covers theirs but you can see here how nice that welder is in my opinion it does a really good job you know for being just a little 110 volt MIG welder and I'm running uh, 035 hardwire as well in this Yeah. Can't complain about that, I guess. Nobody's gonna see it anyways. I mean, unless they get under there and look, but once we sandblast that and uh, put some primer on it, some paint, it'll just look like a really bad seam sealer job. Actually, I've seen some seam sealer jobs uh, on new vehicles that look worse than this. I think I mentioned I picked up a few more of these older trucks too. I figure by the time Heather and I is done with this, we're going to have uh, quite a few hours into this truck, but... You know, if we had to buy one, like I say, $1,000 a month, that's just for payments, and then... You got insurance, probably looking at about $200 a month on a brand new truck, so it's about $1,200 insurance, just or $1,200 worth of payments just to have it sitting in the yard as an ornament. That's not even counting putting fuel in it. Here I'm just touching this up so when I grind it, it, it looks kind of normal. Looks like all one piece. Yeah, it's pretty solid. I'm just showing here, I'll fix that later on. I'll sandblast all in there. This is still pretty thick metal. Yeah, that weld kind of looks bad. What I should have done was sandblasted that in there, but I did not. Didn't even have the sandblaster built at that time. It's still sitting behind me. And here, I was still using the grinder to cut these pieces, and I was doing it down on the ground. Yesterday and the day before, we were using the plasma cutter and I was doing it on those homemade sawhorses Heather and I made. The reason I didn't build a set of sawhorses years ago out of steel is they would have just ended up laying outside and uh, rusted. But now we have somewhat of a, a building to keep them in. I can start, you know, building stuff like that. Now eventually I will sandblast that sandblaster and we'll give it a quick paint of coat of paint as well. Now here I'm working on the panel on the left side of the bottom of the floor. It's that big hole there on the right. I'm going to close that gap up here with this piece. You know, even at this, I may be working on my my hands and knees down there, but uh, I think Heather asked me a question. I'm not sure what it was there, so I just stopped and think a bit. Yeah, I may be working on my hands and knees here, but it's still, it's, it's way better than working outside in that snow and cold. In there, the ground actually feels somewhat warm on the knees. And no, the sparks are not going to burn the building down. You, uh, it would be t 
tough to light that on fire with a small torch because that sawdust is compacted so hard and there's enough snow that blows in there when it melts it stays fairly wet now we wouldn't want to be doing this after a week of nice hot dry weather but even if it was it's not going to dry that out in there that fast Yeah, see, I started, I started fitting pieces. I was searching for pieces up around here, in the old house, in the shed, and whatnot, and I was slowly collecting pieces to put that sandblaster together. I built about five of those in my day. And as you can see, they're just, it's just an old uh, propane cylinder. That's a 30 pounder, and I just turned it upside down. First I unthreaded the valve that would normally thread in the bottom section, and I cut a hole, I used a hole saw, two, two inch I think, three inch, I can't remember now, and I drilled a hole in the bottom of the tank, which is upside down, and that's where I welded in that uh, pipe fitting. And the pipe fitting I used to fill up sand, blasting sand, is just the uh, pipe fitting you would see in your oil furnace tanks that you know used to sit beside your house or inside your house if you ran an oil furnace back in the day. That's in fact where I got it from was an old oil furnace tank. I just unthreaded it and threaded it in there. Now you can see there's a little plate bender, a metal bender sitting up on the sawmill to the right of my head. Uh, but that thing, it came from Princess Auto, which is basically the same as your Harbor Freight if you're in the States. That thing might bend, uh, you know, uh, small gauge material, but it won't even come close to touching this metal I'm using here, this uh, 1 16th. So that's something else I plan on building as a good metal bender, a brake. But I think I'm probably I may make it hydraulic. I may hook up an electric motor with a hydraulic pump, and I may use some sil hydraulic cylinders, and I may uh, make it hydraulic instead of manual. Here, that's one thing I like about that mill. Now I do. That's on the rail there where the mill runs, anyways. See here, I'm just testing to see what it's got to look like here. Got to see where the bends are. Gotta get a pencil and mark this. Oh, there's that Silver Street pencil. It's all basic, basic stuff here I'm doing. It's not complicated. Anybody can learn how to weld. Anybody can do this kind of stuff if they're healthy enough or if they want to, or if they have to. That's really, I think, what gets people is when they have to, they learn how to do stuff real quick. Here I overbent it a little bit, but I fixed that, that's easy enough. I think there was an old rivet that was through there. So here. Pretty darn good. I think that's a pretty good fit there for rough bend. 
think it's almost ready to weld in. It'll get welded in and then I will trim it later on once it's welded in when I go to put the other pieces on. very short I think we're going to get auto audio back on this video so I'm not gonna have to do much more voiceover in this video the problem is you're gonna hear that old generator running you're gonna hear some grinding you're gonna hear some real noise you'll know exactly what it's like when we are working here I think that clamp, I think that I bought that back somewhere around mid 1990s. It's seen its fair share of use for this kind of stuff. But you get the good brand name Vice Grip ones and they last a long time. If you buy those no name ones, well, they don't last long at all. Anyway, I'm going to let you uh, watch the whole video with the audio that's on here and hopefully you enjoyed this little bit of a voiceover and uh, let me know what you think folks. Tries.
Okay, well I'm not sure exactly what happened to the audio here again. I guess it just decided to quit, but we're almost through this video. So I will just talk you through it here. Here again I am fitting this piece as you can see. It takes a little bit to fit these in, but once you do it's uh, pretty easy. Pretty easy to just to weld up. As long as you get as long as you get your settings set right on your welder. And uh, you have somewhat clean steel, clean metal, clean tin, whatever you want to call it. It's like a walk in the park. Here, I'm just trying to tack it here. I'm trying to line it up. Get it tacked right. And I don't get a chance to show you the footage in here of the sawhorses we built or the fact that I fixed the plasma cutter, but you will see that in tomorrow's video. I was editing this, I took a look through and I don't have the footage in here yet. The sawhorses we built, you know, once we brace them up, finish them up. They're not going to break. I wanted to build a good set so we could set this cab right up on top of them. When we go to paint them or do some more work on them. And I also wanted to make them strong enough so we could truck, set the truck box on there as well. And we can also use it for doing our woodworking if we have to cut any OSB or you no know, uh, stuff like that. We have a spot to set them. Here I'm taking a look underneath that inside stuff all that under stuff the, the, the material you see underneath is rusty that gets all cut off in the inside you'll see when I show you inside now I tack it to here but that gets cut off as well that's just to hold it there to hold the profile until I get that lip welded where my hands on it where my hands holding it then once that's welded on then I then I can remove that section I'm just kind of making sure it looks the same as the other side. I mean, not that it matters. It's, it's really in behind the seat anyways. You're you're not going to see this that closely. And I mean, yeah, it doesn't really make a difference. I mean, to the average person, it wouldn't make a difference. But I want to make it look decent. If you hear a noise in the background, Heather made a nice large pot of homemade soup. It's bubbling away in the background and she's got the propane oven going in here as well. And I believe she's making some kind of sour bread, sourdough bread. She made some the other day and let me tell you, it is tasty. I love that. So we're going to have a little bit of soup with some of that sourdough bread so here it's all it's all just a matter of shaping that material and then when I get it shaped I tack it where I want it then I can go on later and weld it solid Hoping next year we have the building all closed in and uh, heated maybe and we are able to do this kind of stuff all next winter. Maybe I can build my old truck as well.
Here, I'm just making that fit. I can't get the hammer in there, so I use this big cold chisel to hammer it down, line her up for me. I know these videos aren't our typical ones we've been doing the last few years. You know, we're not working on the building, but like I say, it's, it's muddy and we really just wanted a break on that building. And most of all, we need a vehicle to drive. And as far as I'm concerned, this is a part of homesteading. People needed a vehicle back in the day they're living on a homestead or building their homestead and if they didn't have a lot of money if they were not buying one I'm sure your parents grandparents they would have done the same thing and you can see here how hot that welds going to be way stronger than the factory spot welds that they had in them when they came from the factory. And when the whole truck is done, well, we'll know exactly what what uh, what's in the truck. We'll know how it's made, we'll know it's we'll know it's strengths and its weaken weaknesses by the time we're done. Fell I know bought a brand new truck a couple of years ago. Within a year the tailgate was rusting on the back of it. And you can start by saying, you know, you can say, well that was a GM or that was a Dodge or that was a Ford. Well I I've seen each of them, you know, go bad. Coincidentally, though, it was a Ford that, no, it was a GMC, I mean, that the, the tailgate was rusty. Didn't have a hole or anything, just, just the paint was rusty on the tailgate. Now, the Ford and Dodge are not much better, I'm sure. It's just, you know, Materials are way thinner and uh, perhaps they don't have access to the good paint either. You know, the material's all recycled, but then so was this truck. This truck was probably a product of recycled material. Here I'm just stepping back and taking a look, seeing how it fits. You know, giving you guys a bit of a look at it. You see just how easy it is. It doesn't look like much now, but wait, once it's all welded together, it's gonna look, it's gonna be one solid piece. This side here shouldn't be too bad to, to repair either. And I do replace all this channel in the back there as well. That that little channel area, it's all it's all fixed now. We did that yesterday. We did drill out the spot wells on the back of the cab there. You can see when we removed that whole chunk and we get pretty much all of it fabbed up yesterday. Anyways, looks like our audio is back on here, so we'll go. Well, that's where we're going to leave it this evening. So I managed to get this section in here. I got to finish welding it. Uh, I had to fix up there yet, but that's no big deal. But I got this all done here now. Aside from cleaning this up and welding underneath. Uh, so I started making this piece here. That's the piece that's missing here as well. It comes across and then up. So that'll be that piece there done. And then I will cut out 
This section down in here next, I'll do it's like an inch and a half strip or something that'll run up here. And I'll cut a piece that fits down. It'll go along here. This all gets replaced all along the back. Then I have to bring another piece down from here. I got to get rid of this where it's really thin. I'll get rid of that and I'll do it in sections as well where I fold it over. Now this here has to get trimmed accordingly according to the other side there i'm not sure but i'll take a look at that tomorrow and then i will make that and then i'll fix the cab corner as well back here and then right about here i think is where the seat belt bolt gets put into which is right let me pop this off here so here that's where the seat belt bolt an angle gets put into there's a piece of an angle here that's welded and the seat belt goes in there I had to drill a hole for a plug, a drain plug, but that's pretty much across from this section here down a little bit. So that will be this section here comes across and is down a little bit. It's just kind of in that channel where the water can get away. And then the seat belt, I believe, gets put in up here, uh, somewhere here because it comes across and up. And I believe it's right, yeah, it's right at the edge of where the cab floor at the back comes down it's pretty much right at the edge of that so i'll do it here too where the cab where the floor starts to come down then the bolt goes somewhere in there and then i gotta finish welding up all of this in here as well weld this all up i grind that and then i'll put a little bit of a lip on it and it faces where does that lip face it faces towards the inside of the cab which is right here it's not a big deal I can put that in. Here's how it's looking inside now. Right here. Now this is a section I put in. So this gets cut out somewhere back about here. So this I'll do in sections as well. So I'll cut. So this here is just basically a flat piece that's rounded up here. And it's got a, a lip on it here. And it has to run right down into, it attaches to here I believe. And once you get the cab corner done in there, this all gets clamped together and welded. This here, once there's a new piece on here, that'll look a lot better too. And then this whole section of floor will be done. Mind you, it's upside down. And the rocker panel will be all done. I have to weld up this a little bit too because I cut through from the bottom through a couple layers. But that's okay, I'll clean that and weld it up. Then I gotta fix in here a little bit. Then that strip along the back, like I was saying, but that's from underneath, I can do that. That'll get put in there and then this side will be finished. So this here has to get rounded a little bit. I may have to make a couple of relief cuts to round that. And uh, then this here will get, Heather, can you push on this section right here? Push in a little bit on that, see that? Yeah, so that'll come in a little more. So it'll come in like this, the new piece, and it'll get welded onto there. So I may make a little rounded piece that gets welded onto there. It's all going to be covered, but still, I want it to look decent, you know? And then once that's all done, it gets sandblasted, primed and painted once the, the both sides are done. We pull all the glass out of it. We'll pull all the glass out of it, all the dash out of it. We tape these up, of course. So when you, when you sandblast, one thing I was taught that you don't just put duct tape over there and sandblast it, or else that duct tape will glue right to this, the glue of it, I mean. So what I would do is I'd clean this up really nice, and then I would, Use masking tape. I'd put a little bit of masking tape on there where I want it to be. Then I put cardboard on there. And then I put masking tape around it. Then I can put duct tape on that over top the cardboard. So a little, so clean this up, a little bit of masking tape, and then piece of cardboard, and then duct tape it. So it won't get through. So if it gets through the duct tape, it's not gonna get through the cardboard and if it does, it still won't get through the masking tape. Now this here, that's her seat belt piece, but I think I'm going to make another one out of some good angle. I have some really thick angle. It'll be thicker than when it was new. And I'll get, I'll get the proper bolt for it as well. But as I was looking up in the corner now, anyway.